What's up YouTube? My name is Amos Bro. For this video, we're going to be uh, doing a game review, and we are going to be doing our first import game for the PlayStation Vita. And it is arguably one of the most interesting titles I have picked up since I've been actually collecting games for my Vita, import or domestic. The reason is because of its subject content. Because you see, it's a, P it's a PlayStation Vita port of a game that came out on the PC, which was a hardcore BL game, and it was also supported by an anime, which I've reviewed on this channel in the past. Uh, the game I'm referring to is Dramatical Murder Recode. Alright, I need to explain this, I guess, a little bit. So, chronologically speaking, there was Dramatical Murder. Dramatical Murder is a hardcore yaoi hentai game. Okay? Let's understand that. That's what the heck it is. Okay? Well, about two years ago, there was this idea with the animation studio Nas to make a <clears throat> anime adaptation out of it. Now, you can imagine how hard that was going to be. Even harder was, around that time, there was also the idea to make a PG-13 version, we'll call it, version of the game. And as you, you may or may not be able to see here, and I'll try to hold it up to the camera for you, the game is rated C by Cero. That is the Japanese rating board, otherwise known as the Computer Entertainment Ratings Organization. And a C there means 15 and up. Here, that would be the equivalent of a T rating. Or there it pass. So, how do you take a game which, by all rights and privileges, is about getting the booty, <laughs> it, it just is, and tone it down enough so that people can play it on the Vita and potentially not get completely skewed out? The answer is, you actually do it pretty damn well. And, much like the anime, it's a very pleasant surprise. Let's get talking about it, because we're going to be a minute. So, the game is about a young man named Alba Saragecki. Um, and just for the record, I have heard Alba, and I've heard Aoba. So I've heard both terms, and I'm going, I may end up using both pronunciations at some point. But Alba works at the recycle shop Mediocre. Okay? And he's doing his thing, you know. Well, he also lives with his grandmother. And her name, I believe the pronunciation is Tay, but somebody may correct me on that one. That's perfectly right. That's the way I've always pronounced it. If I'm wrong, I, I do apologize. But he lives with his grandmother, and Alba has a very unique gift. A gift which is actually instrumental in the story. In the game, Alba has the ability to be able to go into people's minds and either free them or fuck them up. That's perfectly, that's just the honest way of putting it. <clears throat> because you see, Alba has a bit of an alter ego. This alter ego is named Sly Blue. And Sly is not somebody you want to mess with. 
because this dude is basically Alba on steroids. Think about that for a second. He's a pretty hulked up dude. And if you messed with him, he'd probably break your arms and legs if you wanted to. Just the way it is. But see, Alba has a twin brother. And his name is Say. Okay. Where be Say? Well, Say is depending on how you want to look at it living held hostage whatever in a place called the platinum jail what the hell is platinum jail here's your answer the platinum jail is essentially where people by invitation only go to live once you're in you're pretty much there for life it is literally a jail and nobody's come to challenge the system yet well we're gonna fix that Alba eventually along with his band of mates decides he wants to go to take on Tawe, Toe or Tawe however you want to pronounce it <laughs> And he wants to destroy the place to make sure that the Platinum Jail and the Oval Tower no longer exist. Well, to do this, he's going to need some friends. And this is where we get the hacker noise. This is where we get the samurai hairdress or known as Kojak. This is where we get the... Uh, the ever lovable android clear. This is where we get his Almate Ren. You see where this is going? This is where we get all these guys to go and attempt to take down the Platinum Jail and the Christ and the, excuse me, the Oval Tower. However, it's not that easy. Because who are you going to go with? That's the question. The game is essentially split up into two parts. The first part will dictate who you go with. The second part determines whether or not you get the good ending or the bad ending. And you actually need, in this game, to get both of them to achieve total completion. I know it sucks, trust me. I hate getting bad endings. But here's what's interesting. <clears throat> Uh, even though this game is technically rated PG-13, there are some fucked up and en bad endings that they use in this game. I ain't gonna spoil any of them, but let's just say this. If you have seen the OVA for the DMMD anime, Dramatical Murder anime, you know one of them already. At least one of them. And who's involved in it shocks the shit out of me. And I, I was literally skewed out when I saw it. And I don't, look, I don't get weirded out by shit anymore. No, it takes a lot to do that. But this, whew, hello. Okay, we also need to discuss this. In the game, uh... I, I, you know, I told a lie. You know how I said there was two parts? It's actually three. The first two will get us towards the end of the game. The third part, depending on the route you play, is the mini game that you have to play. And some can be really simple. Some can be pretty fucking hard. <laughs> um, it can be as simple as putting kanji characters in the proper order. It can be as simple as eliminating the right colored text bubbles. Or it can be as ball busting as answering the correct as being a, as giving the correct answer on choices and having to do at least nine of them. 
especially if you're not the most fluent person in the Japanese language. Now, do you really need to be? Well, it would help for the mini games. It really would, especially one of the ones towards the tail end. However, it's not necessary. It's not 100% necessary for one reason. Because, for the most part, they're using the anime in some cases as a source material, and I know you can also say they're using the game. If you watch the anime, you know what the hell is going on, so it's easy enough to follow along with the story. So you basically would know what's going on if you did Kojak's route, if you did um, Noise's route, if you did Clear's route, if you did Mink's route, if you did Ren's route. The only one you wouldn't know, because they technically didn't have a route, uh, those would be my boys V-Tree. Iris and Trip. They technically didn't have a um, a root in the game, or in, excuse me, in the anime. So following along with their story might be a little bit harder. Well, technically not, especially if you've watched the anime and you know who they work for. But their root is actually important to the end because even though in theory Ren's root is the true root if you really really broke it down the truest of true roots belongs to the belongs to the not twins <laughs> if that makes any sense um so that's the deal with the story like I said, do you need to know, do you need to be like overly proficient in the language? It does help, but if you follow a walkthrough, which I found on um, I'll, I'll remember this. I think it's PS called PS Imports. They give you the choices. So literally, all you have to do is follow by literally go by number one, two, one, two, two, one, whatever or whatever the order is. Matter of fact. For one of the mini games, for I think it's 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 it's, it's noise. This is literally I'm going to give you the solution to one of them. Okay, there's 17 questions according to Noise's game. The first six times you choose the first one, then you hit the second one. You hit the first one the next second, uh, the next set of times. Then on the next, on the second seven, we'll call it, you hit the second choice. Then you hit three times the first choice. Do you get what I'm saying? So, like three times, you're hitting two. So pretty much you're going one, 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 for, for the most part. You do need to make a lot of saves in this game. Well, you generally, I guess you technically really don't, but you do. If that makes any sense. You do because some routes require you to actually play them more than once. The minimum is twice. You may have to play a route three times, though. And with one particular minigame, you may need to try at least twice for one big reason and it's a biggie because the game is natively in Japanese guess what you get to try and do be questions and you may have to give the correct answer uh, while trying to decipher uh, the Japanese language I have a little bit of an advantage because when I played the Sailor Moon RPG Another Story on my Super Famicom, I actually have a legitimate cartridge, 
I'm able to sometimes discern what things are said. So sometimes I can decipher pretty easily if you give me time what the hell is being said. If I'm on the clock, then I gotta stop and go, okay, let, let, let me read this again. I got that's, but they do allow you to pause during that game. Just letting you know that. For for that mini game, by the way, you have to get nine. You have to get nine correct answers to to complete the mini game. And all the choices are random. That's the beauty of it. They're all yes no questions though. That's the good news. But yes, it is possible to screw that up, and I've done it. Let's talk about the animation because, whew, they did a good job on this. The animation for Recode is fucking brilliant. It goes without saying that I'm a sucker for good animation. And when it comes to video games, I'm a bit more... I'm a bit more snarky about it. Well, this game, there's no need to be. They did a really good job drawing the characters and they did a really good job with the um, emotion in many, in many respects. And I love the I love the CGs and the cutscenes that they did. I'm gonna say it right now for anybody that wonders, yes my favorite route was still um, Clears and I nearly cried like a bitch playing that route. Um, and I'm going to also say this. I said this when I did my review of the anime. I am very confident in saying that I am a straight male. But I can but I am not going to ignore a game because of what content is in it. Especially if the story and the plot line to the game is decent and I'm really familiar with it in some respects. Dramatical Murder Recode does that and a whole lot more. I will make one thing known and this is in the interest of full disclosure. Um, on, I want to say the final couple routes I did use the auto skip. What happened was I was trying to get to the parts where I hadn't read yet. Unfortunately, I went so far ahead that I just said to hell with it and ended up skipping through a couple of the stories that I actually wanted to read, which was like Wrens and um, Virus and Trips. I sort of already knew Wrens and I sort of already, and I know I knew Minx, who was one of the ones I also skipped. V trees I wanted to uh, watch, but then by by the time I um, got to it, I just said, "You know what the hell with it? Let's just get the game done." And it's not because the game is bad. I just wanted because it's it's actually not. It's a really good game, but my whole thing was I just wanted to you know since I already was skipping a good portion of it, I just figured I'd just keep going all the way through. But I did get to, I did see the, um, the bad ending screen for Alba with a virus and trip and, uh, whew. I know this game is supposed to be rated PG-13 technically, but it was a little sketchy. It was borderline. Then again, so was seeing the, uh, bad end screen for, who was it? Clear. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, to be honest. I saw that and my first thought was, Yo, okay. And I just threw my hand up and I was like, Alright. Uh, of course, then I did his proper ending and I nearly cried like a baby. So there you go. <laughs> We're even. Anywho, here's the question. Do we recommend this game? Damn straight. If you can get this game off of Amazon for 50 or 60 bucks, 
it is well worth the investment. Like I said, if you watch the anime at least, you have an idea what you you have an idea what you're playing. So you sort of know the storylines for the different routes. It's just more of a case of what route do you want to start with first? Just know that some routes may not be open right away unless you um, maybe played the other routes first. So, you, so your best bet is if you want to go for Renz, you have to play everybody else's. Then, after you do Renz, you can play Virus and Trips because that's the hidden one. But uh, this game was definitely worth it. I highly recommend you pick up a copy if you can find it. And yeah, please, please, please support this game. And who knows, maybe at some point, although I highly doubt it, maybe an English translation will come down the pipes. The next game we are going to be looking at in the future uh, which I'll be starting on Saturday because my, I'm still slightly emotionally wrecked from friggin Clear's uh, thing on Dramatical Murder Recode We'll be starting this, the first game in the Diabolical Lovers series. This is Haunted Dark Bridal This game will be started on Saturday and then you will get the review as soon as I finish it and I will do all three routes and I will not auto skip for nothing so that's what's going to happen there and I will see you when that review occurs so take care my friends later